But now let's get into the online PD on Switch Gear. Okay, so now I wanted to look at location. So we've talked about detection of PDs in these different assets. So now I'm taking these same types of assets and I'm just gonna summarize the different types of location methods that are used for pinpointing this PD. So in the case of air insulated switch gear, generally the way that we locate PD in air insulated switch gear is time of flight. So installing multiple sensors on the switch gear and as the PD signal escapes the switch gear and travels across the surface, then PD signals can be detected. The two sensors are used to identify the precedent signal. So if you have, um, if you have two sensors on a, on a switch gear, sensor one might detect the signal before sensor two, and therefore you get an idea of the direction that the PD is coming from. And by moving your equipment around, you're able to pinpoint to a specific panel or a specific component on the switch gear. The other method in medium voltage switch gear is um, switching operations. And in fact, this is used um, on all types of uh, switch gear. In fact, um, if you detect PD on a particular switch gear, um, you can switch out the different and isolate the different components of the switch gear and retest between each test. Now, as you retest between each test, you can see if the PD is occurring again or not occurring. So same method in air insulated switch gear as gas insulated switch gear. The only warning on gas insulated switch gear on the medium voltage is that, again, that signal may have traveled quite a long way before finding an exit point. So you can only find with time of flight, you can only find the nearest exit point of the PD. So even if that PD is coming from a neighboring panel, it might only escape from one particular point. So on gas insulated switch gear on the EHV level, we can use time of flight as well, but we're using time of flight with UHF sensors. So typically between two UHF monitoring points, whether the UHF is on a barrier, whether the UHF is on a window, or whether the UHF is inside um, a pre-existing in, uh, internal UHF sensor, connect to the two UHF sensors and use time of flight. Typically you need a much higher frequency um, time of flight system because of the, um, uh, on something like that, because of the, the frequency response of the UHF um, sensors or the, and so often it's done with an oscilloscope or you can use uh, portable equipment as well. Cable terminations with our ultrasonic sensors, ultrasonic uh, directional sensors and so PD can be detected inside uh, cable terminations and if you're pointing your UHF sensor you have a 30 degree window so it's very directional and again, that is again a directional ultrasonic sensor as well. So time of flight then as I mentioned, I mean, with IPEX PDSG1, we have two channels on our PDSG1 designed for time of flight. The resolution between them is 240 picoseconds. So that means we've got a, um, a speed resolution or a distance resolution of the TEV signal to about eight centimeters. So as these signals escape from the switch gear, they'll travel along the surface of the switch gear and using the two sensors on the switch gear, the system will alert you as to which sensor detected the signal first and slowly you move across the switch gear to pinpoint the um the pd this is my point on time of flight on gis so my warning if you like although channel a is physically closer to the to the pd because the pd can only escape through gaskets or maybe if it's medium voltage the cable terminations you need to consider the fact that the pd may have traveled quite a long way before coming out so although in this example, using time of flight would say that channel B has detected the PD first. Bear in mind the PD can come from anywhere within the GIS um, that would find that exit point the nearest. So caution needs to be had when using time of flight techniques on GIS. Sequential switching is the final step if you like. So generally what happens is PD is detected on uh, switch gear, if you're not using a PDSG-1, if you've not done the time of flight, then you may skip that step and just go straight to switching operations. If you have done the time of flight, you've generally narrowed down where the PD may be coming from, but then you'll still use the switching um, operations. So switching operations is isolating different components of the switch gear and retesting for PD in between each test. So for example, in this case, maybe we detected a PD on this switch gear. The first step we might want to do is open the circuit breaker. 
And by opening the circuit breaker, all components are still energized and then we'll retest. Most likely we will still see the PD. Then we wanna switch out the cable. So we switch out the cable. And so that means that, um, I mean, of course, in, in my example at the moment, the circuit breaker is still connected. So that means that this point and this, this half of the circuit breaker would still be energized. And so we test for PD. If the PD is gone, then we know that the PD must be in, in the components that are now isolated. Next step, maybe to remove the circuit breaker if the PD is still there and then re-energize the cable. So that's this case as in this picture, circuit breaker removed, cable could be re-energized. Obviously this part of the switch gear is re-energized. If the PD is no longer occurring, then it's most likely that the partial discharge is inside the circuit breaker. So that's just some examples. So depending on the switch gear type, depending on the possibilities of configuration of your network, plan out a switching schedule so that you can decide switching different components out, isolate different components, and between each test, test for PD. And that's the most effective way to isolate a particular um, component of the switch gear that is most likely source of PD before you then take it offline and either do an offline test or do a visual inspection of the equipment. So I do just want to come back to uh, this slide again and how we detect PD inside switch gear. So a variety of defects in switch gear, a variety of faults um, that could be found in switch gear. And these sensors are basically operate at different frequencies, different bandwidths, and they're optimized for detection of PD in the different types of equipment. And so by using a combination of these um, sensors with appropriate equipment, you can identify where problems may be occurring on your network.